What's up guys? Welcome to the very first episode of Rick's Hobby Hut and today we are going to be tackling some battle damage and some engine glow in the same video. So let's head over to my table, get to work, because I'm really excited to work on this jump captain. <laughs> Welcome to the studio guys. I hope you're all having a wonderful day wherever you are in the world. And I'm currently working on my Smash Captain sitting in bits in front of me right now. And I thought it'd be a, a great way to showcase two techniques to maybe take your take your painting to the next level whether you're uh, it's your first time doing it or it's uh, you're a, a veteran painter now and you want to maybe learn a few other techniques to give it uh, Give your models a boost so specifically the first part of this uh, video we're going to be working on battle damage like i did on my this is what i use for my watchmaster and my death watch army oh, it's, just, it's just a beautiful model it's a it's one of the uh, space marine hero sculpts uh specifically sergeant Sevastus, i think is his name so i'm going to be showing you how to do the battle damage like this on this bit right here and the rest of the model and then I'm also going to be showing you how to do the engine glow on my Vanguard Marines now uh, word of warning this part of the video the second half is going to be all airbrush work uh, so if you don't have an airbrush uh, this the second half of the video might not will not apply to you I have not tried to do it by brush yet uh, maybe that'll be the next step but for now I'm just going to be uh, showing you how to do this with an airbrush really simple it's two colors uh, and a three-step process so for battle damage what colors we're gonna be using and uh, an equivalent if you don't have the specific paint I'm using which is going to be my base tone which was the original color for uh, the base of this guy my mid tone which is a shafty bone and then for the metallics, either uh, Chainmail Silver from Flayho Game Air. I love this paint. It's my favorite metallic uh, for any metallics, really. Or Iron Breaker will be the Citadel equivalent. You can see I don't use my Iron Breaker very much anymore because I have this. It's not a perfect match, but I love this paint so much. So let's get started with this. Uh, first thing I'm going to show you how to do the scratches. Uh, Citadel equivalent for Tri Brown is Dry Eye Bark. So I'm going to start with the Cherry Brown. And it's important, to, guys, to have a specific brush for doing fine detail. I have two here uh, set aside specifically just for doing these these kind of things uh, a Windsor and Newton zero and, or a layer small layer brush from Citadel will suffice now if you're using dry up bark for this be sure to water it down it has to be airbrush consistency or a very a very watery layer consistency not a glaze but a, a, a layer and what I'm gonna do Drag the tip, drag it to a point, and I'm just going to come across eh, right about here, and I'm going to put a line. Doesn't matter if it's a little thick at this stage, because the next stage is going to cover a little bit of it up. We're going to go with another scratch right here, like so. Maybe a few pock marks. Scratch here. Be a little bit more random with it. Mm. Yeah, we'll go scratch here. Just like so. Just like that. Just a few. You don't want to go overboard. And then we're going to move on to the Ashapti Bone. Now 
again you want a a fairly thin layer consistency not a glaze again and then when you're coming in with this you want to go underneath the light so it's catching so you imagine the lights coming down like this wash my paint brush out first so the lights coming down this way you can see the way I did the gradient with the airbrush so I want to do the under edge uh, to catch the highlight and you almost want to extend that past the original scratch mark the image original dark scratch you made that way it gives it three dimension like so and with the pock marks just put a little dabs around it underneath like so you can go a little thicker with the paint at this stage too with this like so I'll come over here do this one and again with this one on the edge get a drag from the edge and down and then I gotta run again I'm gonna try and reestablish the highlight up here like so I don't know if you'll be able to see it very well on camera but I've reestablished the uh, the edge highlight here and I've run it into the scratch so it looks like it's taking a gouge out of it and that's how you do scratches. That's how I did the rest of the model on the shield. Again, I drag from the edge and up. Now, next step is you're going to take your dry up bark. Don't need this anymore. Get that out of the way. I've gone ahead and put the decals on uh, because I want the battle damage to look like it's peeling the peeling the paint away and the emblems and all that kind of stuff you get a piece of piece of foam like this you want a fairly dense foam or not dense uh porous this it's the same foam that you get in packing boxes a lot of packing boxes this one actually came from a uh a paintball uh, one of my marker old marker boxes and i use it to I, I use a chunk of it to cut up and then also store my pin stuff that i'm working on and you want to just cut cut it on an angle a little bit like this cut it on an angle so it kind of all concentrates at the tip it's gonna go in get some paint on it then dab a majority of it off like so to the point where it's just it's just laying down a little bit actually I got a little bit too much off there like so your fingers will get dirty from this so FYI and we're going to work around and start working around the uh, the the exhaust for the shoot for the not the shoot what is it the thruster port we'll call it the thruster port just like so and I'm going uh, you want to dab lightly don't go too heavy unless you're going on these edges right where it's like really worn it's okay if you get a little bit on the metal on the edges you can see it's already starting to get dirtied up just like so it's fine to get this on metallics too And that's all dirty it up. And it's still got the nice edge highlights underneath. That's why you, uh, you do the battle damage last. Because then you keep the edge highlights. Next time we'll move on to the actual model itself.
And I'm going to be more focused with this one like I was on the backpack where the, the thruster ports are. Because I'm just going to be focusing on certain areas like the bottom, bottom of the butt. Because they do some sitting every once in a while. And the armor's bound to get scratched up right around there. Same with around the joints. And the toes. As they're walking through it and they're getting all all beat up from the road and marching. I'm not going to do too much on the upper. I might do a little bit just on the edge of this, like so. Maybe a little bit there. Yeah, that's it. And then I want to do the shield. I'm not going to do anything on the helmet. I like the way the helmet looks. I've done, I've done a couple of scratches on the eye. But that was it. The helmet looks too good the way it is. I don't want to I don't want to actually pop that up. Now we're going to move on to the metallics. I'm going to use chainmail silver for mine. Um, Iron Breaker is, in the Citadel line is a perfect equivalent. I don't like to go too bright with the metal. Oops. Because of the fact that uh, it, 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 too bright of the metal takes away from it, I find. You just want a little bit of it dingy, dark. And this is a air paint, so I'm going to have to dab it a little bit more to get most of it out. It is really runny. And we'll start with the shield on this one. Actually, no, we'll start with the backpack. I'll show you how to do concentrated around the the thrust port. So it looks like it. Don't go too heavy with this. This one you want a lot, a much lighter touch and a lot less compared to the last step you did. But around the actual thruster port, you can go fairly heavy like so down there and we're specifically targeting the edges of the shield So you may not be able to see much of it on camera because it's so subtle. But when you see the final pictures and the close-ups, uh, you, you'll be able to see it. That's enough on that. You got to know when to say when. And again, on the servos, around the bottom, the well-worn areas. On the toes, on the kneecap, a little bit around there, a little bit there, put a little bit up on here. Like so. Not much, just a little bit. Now you're done with that, you can just throw that away. And that is how you do simple battle damage. See, it's a really nice, clean effect. Really easy to achieve. And we'll be going on to the, the thruster next. How to do the thrusters in the next half of the video. There's the body. The 
the shield. Alright guys, now that we've finished the battle damage, we will be doing engine glow on the back of this. It will be an airbrush tutorial, so if uh, you don't have an airbrush, this, this won't help you uh, achieve this effect. It's a three step process, two paints, really simple to do, and we will be achieving this. This process is not just limited to blue. You can use orange, you can use red, you can use green, you can use yellow if you want. Um, the, what I love about this process is that it, it's not just limited to a single paint. But the color I will be using today will be blue. I use it for my whole army. Uh, electric blue from Vallejo Game Air and dead white from Vallejo Game Air. If you don't have uh, air paints and you're coming from the Citadel line but you have an airbrush, Use Lothern Blue, it's the it's the equivalent to the Electric Blue. Same effect, you'll get the same color out of it. But if you're using Citadel paints in an airbrush, always use Flow Improver from Vallejo. Reason being is that it acts as a retardant, gives you better working time in the pot over a thinner. So I'm going to go get set up at the airbrush station, and I'll see you guys over there. Alright guys, now that we're set up at the airbrush station, we will be working on a low PSI. Unfortunately, I don't have a gauge on my compressor, so I can't tell you exactly what PSI I'm working at. So what I'm doing here is I'm working around the inside of the thruster port, just in a circle, kind of outlining it and concentrating it more to the middle. Again, just making sure I have it evenly coated on both sides. Once we're done with that, we will be moving on to the dead white. Again, I'm working at a low PSI, but be careful if you're working with an airbrush because white will spatter when you are at a low PSI. And what I'm doing with this this time is I'm actually working a line across the center of the engine so it makes it look like it's more of a concentrated thrust. And this is the overall result. Really happy with the way it turned out. I hope turned out just as well for you guys. You could use it right here at tabletop standard, but we are going to take it one step further in the final step. All right guys, now that we're done with the airbrush, we're back to the paint station. I've got my original color that I had laid down in the engine. What we're going to do is we're actually going to lay it out as a wash basically. We're going to add a lot of water to it. Basically break it down. To a wash consistency. Just like so. And then we're just going to wash it in to the recesses of that white and blue that we already laid down. It's going to slightly tint the blue or tint the white, sorry. And act just like a wash, but instead of darkening it, it's going to create that light in the recesses like it's like it's the engine is glowing. like so now you can see how the light blue has settled into the recesses compared to uh, a shade it's creating that highlight in it more or less and that is how you do engine glow now all that's left is to assemble the model and let you guys see it.
Richard, boy! <laughs> All right, guys, I hope that helped you. I had a blast painting my miniature. As always, like, share, and subscribe. And if you wanna see more content like this, let me know down below what you'd like to see. And I'll see you guys in the next one.